Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to part 9 in creating a hash table project in C++. So now we're ready to start testing our hash class and make sure that everything we've done so far is working properly. So we just finished uh, writing the print table function and we'll be using that in this tutorial to begin testing our hash class. So let's go to the main.cpp file now. I went ahead and just deleted everything that was in the main function that I had there before. And uh, I left the return zero, of course. But uh, I just deleted everything in there. We're going to begin creating a new test now to make sure everything's working. And so we're going to create a new hash object. So we do that by typing in hash, which is the name of our class. And I'm going to name it hashy. So we've got this hash object named hashy. And this line of code is going to create this new hash class object. And when it does that, it calls the constructor. And if you remember our constructor, let's go ahead and just take a look at it really quick. Um, what's going to happen here is in the constructor, well, the hash table, first of all, is holding a whole bunch of item pointers. So they have the ability to point to some item. And so our constructor makes each of those item pointers point to a new item. And then it places the, the word empty in the name and drink string variables and then it makes sure that the items next pointer points to null and so once we uh, that's what's happening when we uh, create this hashy object here is it's calling that constructor and so then when we type in hashy dot print table it should print that information so it should print that there are zero items in each bucket and that the uh, name and drink values of each of those buckets are empty. So let's go ahead and test that to make sure that that's the case. So we'll go ahead and run this project really quick and I hope that that works. And let's see what happens. And it looks like everything is looking pretty good. So you can see we start at index 0 and we have empty, empty, um, if those contain some sort of item, then it would have the person's name and uh, their favorite drink right here. And it says the number of items is zero. So that means that index zero doesn't really contain any information. And then index one, two, three, it should go all the way to nine because that's uh, we have 10 as our table size. So zero through nine, that's 10 different buckets. So it shows that they're all empty and that there are no more items in the list. So zero is the total number of items in each bucket. And since we just have this empty and empty here, we're considering that to not be an item because that's just a default value. So our table is completely empty right now. And uh, so that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and put some values inside of our table. So I already went ahead and typed in all of this information ahead of time. So you don't have to sit here and watch me type in a whole bunch of people's names and favorite drinks. So we'll go ahead and paste that information here. And I'll format this just a tiny bit so it looks a little bit nicer. And so now let's go ahead and just move this print function down below. So we'll cut that and paste it down here. And uh, so now we should see all of these names and their associated drinks in our hash table. So let's go ahead and run the program now and see how this looks and make sure that our add item function is also working correctly. So here we go. We've got, looks like we've got some stuff going on. It doesn't say empty anymore, which is good. So let's kind of go up to the top here. And it looks like I've still got some print statements from, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that so it's easier to see. So that is actually coming from our hash.cpp file here. And what's happening with all those extra numbers is, let's see, it is in the, hash function itself, it's right here. So this is kind of printing out what the hash value is as it builds up for each item. So let's go ahead and just get rid of that so our output is nicer. So if you guys are, have been following along with me from the beginning, you'll want to delete that as well. So let's go ahead and run the program again and uh, we'll try this one more time. And so now when we go to the top, we shouldn't have all those values up above, so that's good. So it looks like index zero here, we've got Pepper with her caramel mocha, and then it says number of items is two. So that means she's not the only person that is in this uh, bucket right here. Index one now holds Annie with her hot chocolate, and index two holds my name with my favorite drink, which happens to be a loca. 
and uh, it also says number of items is two. That means that there is one other person in this uh, bucket with me. And uh, so we kind of go down the list. It looks like bucket three or index three is empty. Index four has two people. One of those people is Emma with her strawberry smoothie. And we can kind of keep on going down and we see that uh, Sarah is placed in index five and uh, she's the only one there. There's only one item in uh, index five. And you can kind of just keep going down the list and you can just see how everybody just got placed in their different uh, locations. So let's stop the video here and let's start to, let's create a print function that will allow us to look deeper inside of these indexes. That way we can see that index nine holds Kim and she likes to drink ice mochas, but there's more information here. There's another um, person and their favorite drink stored in index nine. So let's write a function in the next tutorial that will help us to see deeper into these um, hash table buckets and we can see who else is stored in this uh, bucket. So we'll do that in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. Um, you guys have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.